Okay, in this lecture, I'm going to literally just walk through every single one of the group quiz questions and uh, watch the way that I do it, make sure that you understand how to do it. So, the director of admissions at that university in Nova Scotia estimated uh, the distribution of students' admissions for the fall semester on the basis of past experience. They had six semesters in which they had exactly uh, 1,000 students, two semesters of 1,200 students, and one semester of 1,500 students. So we've got this right here, and what is this called right here? This is called a probability distribution. Okay, so we've got the probabilities, we've got um, the corresponding numbers. So uh, the next question is, is what is the expected number of admissions for the fall semester? Um, in other words, uh, what is it that we are expecting um, for this upcoming fall semester, uh, and the way that we calculate that is by calculating the mean. So let's control C, um, and then we're going to go into Excel, and we're going to press control V, and so remember I copied and pasted a little bit above, a little bit below, and now what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the mean. So in order to calculate the mean, um, we're going to do equals probability uh, multiplied by uh, the admission, okay, and then we are going to just drag it down, um, and then after we do that, we are going to do equals sum, and uh, that is 1,110, so the average uh, admissions, um, which is what we're expecting, is 1,000, uh, or, yeah, 1,110. So, um, once again, I just multiplied the admission by the probability, uh, which gives us this right here. So, adv admission uh, times probability, um, and then you add all that up, and that gives you 1,110. So, we're going to put 1,110 uh, right here. Next, what is the standard deviation? So, in order to get the standard deviation, um, we've got to do a little bit more work. So 1,110 is the mean, so what we have to do now is we have to do equals admissions, the, that number, minus 1,110, um, and then equals 1,200 minus 1,110, and then equals 1,500 minus 1,110. Okay, after we do that, so we'll do a minus um, mean, um, and then we've got uh, a minus mean squared. Sorry, I don't have all the notations because it's hard to get the Greek letters in here really quickly. So equals um, this, uh, we're doing the a minus mean squared. Okay, so then a minus mean squared, and just drag it all the way down. So we've got a minus mean squared, um, and then after, well, admissions minus the mean, so the individual admissions minus the mean uh, squared. Um, and then after we do that, uh, we are going to multiply it by the probability. So equals this multiplied by the probability, and drag it all the way down which I know that there's a lot of steps here. So, um, here we go. A, here, we'll just do this. Control C, Control V, uh, times probability. Um, and then we add all those together, equals sum. Okay, so it's 24,900, and this right here is the variance. And then in order to get the standard deviation, uh, we just have to take the square root, so equals square root of the variance, uh, which is going to be 157.797, uh, or 157.8, so this right here is the standard deviation. So, um, I'll zoom in a little bit, so, uh, let's see here, data, let's see here, formulas, let's show the formulas, uh, show formulas. So we're going to just make this a little bit smaller so you can see, you know, pause the video if you need to and see all the different formulas that I did. Uh, but that is how you calculate the square root uh, and the, well, the standard deviation. Okay, so formulas, I'm going to go back, I'm going to take these off, 
and so we're going to put 157.800. So 157.80. Actually, with this, I only wanted two decimals because we're not talking about probability. So then what is the variance? Um, literally, we just have to go back and it's 24,900. Let's just make sure that there's no decimals. Um, home, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Yep, there's no decimals. So um, it's always really important to, to look, you know, are there decimals behind there? So really we can just put 24,900 right there. All right, going a little bit, uh, going down to question two. A telemarketer makes six phone calls per hour and is able to make a sale on 30% of those contacts. During the next uh, two hours, find the probability of making exactly four sales. Okay, in order to do this, uh, what we're looking at is they make six phone calls. There's a probability of success uh, at each phone call, um, six phone calls per hour. So you've got a certain number of trials. Um, they are either going to make a sale or not make a sale. So there's two possible outcomes. Um, and so for this, we're going to use the binomial probability distribution. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go file, open, let's see, the binomial probability distribution. Uh, hold on. Let me just go down a little bit. Let's see binomial there we go binomial probability distribution worksheet so now what we've got to do is let's take a look at this information six phone calls per hour okay um so during the next two hours so they make a total of 12 phone calls so they're making a total of 12 trials and on each of those trials what's the probability of success the probability of success at each trial is 30 percent so we're going to put 0.3. Um, now it asks us some questions. Okay. Uh, the probability of success at each trial. What is the probability of making exactly four sales? Okay, so let's take a look at this. The probability of making exactly four sales. There's a couple ways that we can do this. Uh, we can first come down here and we can say, okay, this is the probability of four out of 12. So four out of 12 is the probability is 0.231. Or you can come right up here and you can do four, four, oops, four, um, and it's going to do the exact same thing for you. So uh, four and four, or four and uh, right here. And so we're going to put 0 0.231 is the probability of success. Another thing that you can do is you can come right down here and you can say, what is the probability of uh, four? Um, and you can see one, two, three, uh, four, and um, let's see here, or that's with four trials, uh, so four successes is actually right here, uh, I need to fix this, uh, it's actually right here is, is the one that we're looking at, but 0.231, okay, so uh, 0.231, okay, Oh, that's not what I want. Okay, so 0 0.231, uh, the probability of making no sales. So I'll come right back here and use this right here. So zero, uh, the probability of making zero sales is 0 0.0138 or 0 0.0134. So I'm going to put 0 0.0134, uh, except I don't want to do that because that's going to four. So uh, it's going to be 0 0.014 is what we're going to do. 0 0.014. Uh, the probability of making exactly two sales. Um, exactly two. Uh, sorry, exactly two sales. So we're going to look at two sales, um, and it's going to be 0.167, or if you round it up, it's going to be 0 0.168. 0 0.168. And then the average number of sales in the two hour period. So in order to get the average number of sales in the two hour period, you literally just have to multiply 0.3 by 12. Okay. Because uh, what we've got right here is we've got the average number of trials. So equals, um, I'm going to unprotect this. I'm going to 
do something really quick. Um, view protect. Um, I'll do that later. So um, here we go. We've got point three times twelve. So. Uh, this right here is going to be the average number of sales, so it's going to be 3.6 is the average number of sales in a two-hour period. So 3.6 or 3.60 or something to that effect, 3.600. Okay, so moving on. If a restaurant is dependent on favorite food, what is the probability of a Mexican... Uh, of probability of Mexican being an individual's favorite food? Okay, so if restaurant... So if restaurant is dependent on favorite food, okay, what is the probability of a Mexican being an individual's favorite food? Okay, um, so right here, um, it's literally just uh, 35 divided by 221. Okay, and the reason why it's 35 divided by 221 is um, I didn't say which restaurant or anything to that effect, but I wanted you guys to, the reason why I put that there wasn't to trip you up, it's uh, to give you guys the, the, the mindset for the rest of the questions as well, that one can be dependent on the other. Okay, so if restaurant is dependent on favorite food, was prob the prior probability, so prior probability of Mexican, so prior meaning, um, you know, it all by itself, uh, being an individual's favorite food, so it's 35 divided by 221. So equals 35 divided by 221, and it's going to be 0 0.158. 0 0.158. Okay. Given an individual's favorite restaurant is Whataburger, so already we're looking at this. Given that a favorite that it's Whataburger, what is the probability that their favorite food is Italian? Okay, come right down here, and you notice the intersection of that is zero. So all that you've got to do is put zero, point zero zero zero, or just zero. I mean, really anything will work. You can literally just put zero in there. Um, I think I put pretty much every variation of zero that you can choose from, but just put zero because there's zero probability. What is the joint probability of an individual having a favorite food of burger and their favorite restaurant being Chick-fil-A? So favorite food of burger and their favorite restaurant being Chick-fil-A. So when we say joint probability, what we mean is what is the probability of both this and this occurring among everyone, among everyone. So it's 23 divided by 221. 23 divided by 221, uh, that right there is joint probability. The probability of two things happening equals 23 divided by 221. So it's going to be 0 0.104, 0 0.104. Okay, so what is the empirical probability of an individual's favorite food being burger? Okay, what is the empirical probability of an individual's favorite food being burger? That means, um, you know, looking at this, uh, 65 out of 221, because these are all the individuals right here. These are all the individuals whose favorite food is burger. So what is the empirical probability of an individual's favorite food being burger? And it's going to be 65 out of 221. So let's come right here equals 65 divided by 221 and it's 0.29412 or 0 0.294 0 0.294 and then uh, notice we had 221 trials there but if you were to randomly survey 40 people what would be the probability that exactly 13 of them would have a favorite food of burger so what we're going to do is we're going to take the empirical probability which you can take the 0.294, but I'd suggest taking this, 0.29412, copy this, okay, and then go into the probability, the binomial probability distribution worksheet, and put this, the 0.2941, dot, 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 um, put it into the probability of success at each trial, and remember it said with 40 trials, okay, with 40 trials, what's the probability of how many people's favorite food being burger? Okay, that exactly 13 of them would have a favorite food of burger. So we're going to go down to here, 13, and the probability is 0 0.122, 0 0.122. So, um, and I'll show you how I got that again, is I did, uh, we've got the number of successes, so 0 out of 40, 1 out of 40, 2 out of 40, so on and so forth. 
Okay, so this right here, uh, 13 successes, that is what it asks for, right? 13 successes is 0 0.122, 0 0.122. And so um, that right there is all the answers and how to do the entire quiz.